Hello, my name is Norris, and welcome to another Web Design Touch Plus tutorial. In this tutorial, I'd like to show you an expanding footer technique. Let me show you how that looks. When you scroll down, you see a little footer, and when you click on that, it expands, and you can click again. And when you click on that, it expands again, and again, and again. And then when you want to close it, you'll just click over here. And I just think that this is a nice footer effect that I would like to share with you. So let's get going. I'll start off by opening up Sublime Text. And I have a footer folder in here, and I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to need three things for this. I'm going to need an index.html. I'm going to need a style CSS and a file for my JavaScript. That's all I need. I can close my sidebar now. I'll split everything in two columns and move the script and the style to the right. And now we can begin by writing some HTML. Now I'm going to be using Emmet to create my HTML. And if you have never seen Emmet before, it's a really great tool available almost for any editor that you use. You can find more about that at Emmet.io. And you'll find all sorts of information about Emmet in here. And you can read about that on your own. So if you know how Emmet works, good, you'll be able to follow along. If you don't know how Emmet works, you already know where to look for more information about that. So let's start writing our HTML. So this is going to be an HTML5 document. I'm going to have a header. I'm going to have a large title in which we had the Tuts Plus. I'm also going to have a div wrapper with some lorem ipsum text. And then finally, we're going to have a footer. And inside that footer, I'm going to have a link, which is going to have a class of toggle. And it's going to say, click me. And then next to the link, I'm going to have a footer with some lorem text in it. And if you pay attention to this part, then right here, I'm going to insert times five. That just means that I'm going to get five footers in there. And let's just expand all of that. There we go. Now, and the important part is in the footer, of course. So what do we have here? Let's take another look. Actually, the first thing is that I don't want to leave my links empty. So I'm just going to add a pawn sign in here. And I'm also going to add in some numbers so we can tell the difference between the footers. Like so. Save that, open the browser. Close down the emmet, and we're going to go to this URL where I have the HTML. And it looks like you would expect it to look. And now the next thing we need to do is we need to write some styles really quick. First thing I'm going to do is disable text decoration on links. Now we need to add in some body styles. Line height of 1.6, font family is going to be sans serif, font size is going to be 16 pixels and set the background color to be E and the font color is going to be on 1C2130. Now I don't know that color off the top of my head. I have it written down in front of me. Next thing we need to do is style the header. I'm going to align the text to the center add the padding of 40 pixels. So now if I save that, the header should look a little better. And it doesn't because I haven't added the styles to my HTML. So I'll add a link in here, link to my style CSS. I actually need to do the same thing with the script, add a source of script.js. And now if I reload the page, it should look as it's supposed to. I'm actually going to add in a star padding in here like so. So we wouldn't have these white borders in here. Uh, reload the page. Now you see what I mean. And just a little more quick styles in here. Now reload the page and there we go. We're almost done. No, we're not. So now we need to style the footer. And actually the page is pretty responsive in my opinion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put Google Chrome on the right side in here. So that way we can see our footer. And I'll just make sublime text a bit smaller, like so. 
And I'm actually going to disable the two column layout in Sublime Text because we don't need the HTML reference. And in case we do, we'll just switch back to that. So now we can style our footer. So we have a class of footer. Set the background color to be E again. Set the font color to be 515151 and a padding to be 40 pixels again. Now we are almost at the fun part. We just need to style the toggle. So a class of toggle and I'm just putting in styles really quickly so you wouldn't get bored. And one thing we need to do here is add a transition and we're going to transition the background color. It's going to take one second for us to do it and we're going to ease out. One more class to add, a toggle which is open and we're going to change the background color for that toggle to 515151 and now save that, reload our page and there we go. So this is how our page would look like without any JavaScript because we haven't written any yet. So now we can begin writing our JavaScript because we have a good fallback. And if the user happens to be one of the unlucky 2% who don't have JavaScript enabled on their browser, then he's still going to be able to see this footer. And this is actually something you call progressive enhancement. So let's start writing our JavaScript. And before we do, there's a little spelling error that I made in here. We need to ease out, save that. And that reminds me that we need to enable jQuery as well. And I'm going to copy this tag in here and actually I'm going to paste it after the footer. So that way we don't need to listen for Dom ready. Replace this right here with jQuery.com. Okay there, now we are all set to start writing our JavaScript. So the first thing we want to do is as soon as the script runs, we want to hide all the footer elements. And with jQuery, we can do it very easily. We'll just select all the footer elements. And we also need to hide all the toggles. And this is actually a great time for us to review the HTML. So let's switch back to two columns. Scroll down. And here you can see we have the footer container. And then inside that footer container, we have a link which is followed by a footer div. And then we have another link. And after that link, we have the footer again. So we are going to be hiding all of these footers in here. And I'll just show you that. And you can see that we have all the toggles left in here. So we need to hide them as well. But we don't want to hide the first one. So I'm just going to say colon not first child. and switch back to one column layout. So now what this is going to do is it's going to hide all the footer elements, it's going to hide all the toggle elements, but not the first one that it finds. And if we save that and reload the page, there we go. And now all that's left for us to do is to write an event listener. So we are going to listen for click events on class toggle. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to prevent the default action of the event. So even if I would save this right now, if I click on the click me, I'm going to go back to the top. And that's actually because the link is bringing me to a new page, which is the pawn sign. I don't want that. I want to stop the default event action like so. So now if I save this and reload the page, scroll down, click on, click me, and nothing ever happens. Now the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to say this, and this is going to refer to whichever element was clicked on. And I'm going to toggle class and add the is open class. And then also I'm going to point to the next element which has a class of footer and I want to slide toggle that over 500 milliseconds, which is half a second. Then I want the next element with a class of toggle 
to also slide toggle in 500 milliseconds. So let's go over this line in the HTML. So essentially when I'm going to click this guy right here, it's going to select the next class of footer. So it's going to be this. And then it's also going to select the next toggle class. So it's going to slide these two guys up. And then afterwards, if I click on this toggle, it's going to slide these two guys up. And let's see that in action. Have to reload a page. And it almost seems that nothing happened, but actually it did. If you notice, the scroll bar isn't at the bottom anymore. And that means I can scroll down. And now if I click again, it's going to scroll down click again, and again, and again. But it's not as it was supposed to look like. And that's because jQuery did what we asked it to do. It slide toggled the footer and toggle elements. We didn't say anything about scrolling. So let's do that right now. We need to scroll the HTML and the body element. And we're going to do that with an animation. And I'm just going to pass in an object here and set the scroll top to be the document height. And I'm going to do this over 500 milliseconds again. And that's it. And now if I reload the page and click click me, here you can see we have the nice effect that we were looking for. So essentially what's happening in here is that we are slide toggling the content and we are scrolling at the same time. So for example, if I would set the slide toggle to be 1500 milliseconds instead of 500, let's see what happens. So that's a weird looking effect right there. And we're just going to revert that to 500 milliseconds. And now everything's going to look just fine again. But now we have a slight problem in here. If I click click me for again, it kind of collapses, but it totally doesn't do it in the right way. So what we want to have is, if we click on the first click me, it should close everything down. Instead, it just didn't do its job at all. So let's think about that. If I click this, and then click the same item again, uh, it works just fine. But if I click it, and then I click this one, and now if I would want to collapse the first footer, it does that, but it doesn't hide this thing right here anymore. And that's because we have a slide toggle, and we have a slide toggle in here. So it's going to select the next footer and the next toggle, but it's going to slide toggle them. So currently, it doesn't check if the element is already open. That's why we need to write an if statement in here. So if this element already has a class is open, then we will want to do something special in here. We will want to say that this element, first thing we need to do is remove the class of is open, because it's not going to be open anymore. And then we're going to use jQuery next all. So next all means that I'm going to select everything after this element. And this currently refers to the currently clicked element. So we're going to target all the footer elements after the clicked element. So if we click on click me, it's going to hide all the footer elements after the click me. And we also need to hide the toggle class just as we did before, we don't want to target the first toggle. And that's because we want this guy right here to be visible. So we could click on it so we could see the footer. So I'm just going to paste the selector in here so I don't have to type that all over again. So now that we have selected all of those elements, we need to do something with them. And we're just going to slide up in 500 milliseconds again. And we're also going to remove class on all of those elements as well. Now you would think, why would we remove class if we already did remove a class? Now we removed the class from the currently clicked element. 
we haven't removed the class from other links that in here. So for example, if I click this guy right here, we want to remove is open class from click me three and click me four as well. Now I just have to add in a semicolon, save that, reload, and let's see how that works. So if I click this, it's going to open. Now the second footer, the third footer, and now if I click the footer number two, it's going to close everything down on up to here. And if I click this guy right here, it's going to be buggy. And that's actually because I made a tiny mistake in here. See, right now we are checking if this has class is open. And then we do all this nice stuff in here. We also execute everything that is in here. And we don't want to do that because if the element that we're clicking on is already open, then we don't want to toggle any more open classes or do any sort of scrolling. So what we can do here is just in a new line, add a return. So if this element is already open, we're going to do this line right here. And then the return is just going to exit out of the function. So let's save that, reload the page, click on the first footer, the second footer, the third footer. And now if I click this, it should become blue and go back down. And there we go. That's how you do it. It's really simple to do. And I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Thank you for watching.